Well, I have Republicans who come to me on the floor and say, I wish I could vote with you today. Yours is the right vote, but I would just take too much flack back home. And I have Republicans who come to me and say, that's wrong what APAC is doing to you. Let me talk to my APAC person. By the way, everybody but me has an APAC person. What like, does that mean, an APAC person? It's like your babysitter, your APAC babysitter, who uh, is always talking to you for APAC. They're probably a constituent in your district, but they are, you know, firmly embedded in APAC. And every member has something like this? Every rep I don't know how it works on the Democrat side, uh, but that's how it works on the Republican side. And when they and when they come to DC, you go have lunch with them, and they've got your cell number, and you have conversations with them. So I've had like, that's cr absolutely crazy. I've had four members of Congress say, "I'll talk to my APAC person," and like, it's literally what we call them, my APAC guy. <laughs> I'll talk to my APAC guy and see if I can get him to, you know, dial those ads back. Why have I never heard this before? It doesn't benefit anybody. Why would they want to tell their constituents that they've basically got a buddy system with somebody who's representing a foreign country? It, it doesn't benefit the congressman for people to know that, so they're not going to tell you that. It's it's in. It, it, have you seen any other country do anything like this? Like no. R Russia. Russia obviously determines the outcome of our elections. We keep hearing that. Do, does anyone have a Putin guy that they talk to? Not only do they not have a Putin guy. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they don't they, they don't have a Britain guy. They don't have an Australian guy. They you know, they don't have a Germany dude. Like it's the only country that does this that has somebody that like uniformly I guarantee there's some spreadsheet at APAC where <laughs> <laughs> where you know the the APAC dude is who's matched up with the congressman is there and then all the congressman's votes on the issue oh has the congressman been to Israel they they pay for trips for congressmen and their spouses to go to Israel I may be I mean I don't I, I'm not the only Republican who hasn't taken the APAC trip to Israel but I'm probably one of a dozen that hasn't taken that trip, and the other ones just haven't got around to it. The mm -hmm. APAC babysitter. By the way, that thing about the uh, trips that they pay for, mm -hmm. it's not just for politicians. It's also for any number of uh, prominent people and of media course. figures. Yes. In fact, I don't know if I talked about it this here or somewhere else, but when I started MSNBC, got an email asking if I wanted to go on the APAC trip to Israel. I said no, but, um, you know, that's part of what they do because then they can take you to Israel and they can show it to you through their lens and have a chance to, you know, subtly and not so subtly propagandize you. And plus just create this human sense of like, oh, yes. I owe this person something because they took me on this great trip and I had a great time, you know, so I like them. They're friends. They're friends with me. Like, I should listen to what they have to say. It's very intelligent in terms of influence peddling, but I think, you know, a lot of Americans are very shocked to learn that this is how this all works, Auger. I, I mean, yeah, it is, as you said, it's almost funny because it is common knowledge here. I've also been offered many free trips to Israel. My only trip to Israel, by the way, paid on my own dime. Thank mm -hmm. you for that. I don't take free trips from anybody. 